You ever see something so mind-blowing or so complicated that you seem to think you can never achieve it, but after a while of being in a certain craft, you think to yourself, I think I know how you did that. This is going to be a little bit complicated to explain, so I am now going to reenact exactly how we got to this point here. I really like that Amico Glaze, Cosmic Tea Dust. How do they get the sparkles in it? I don't know, I assume it's some form of crystal or dolomite or something that just doesn't burn out all the way in the glaze matrix. I, I really have no idea. Can't you do that? No, I have no idea how to specifically make sparkles in any glaze I want. It's it's more complicated than that. You can't just like take any glaze you feel like, sprinkle little sparkles in it, and like they, they come out with sparkles. Can't, can't just like put sparkles in glaze. Okay, but can't you though? Ha whether we wanted it or not, we've stepped into a war with a cabal on Mars. And now we're here, trying to test out how many sparkles I can put inside stuff because someone asked an overly simplified question. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with my glaze review videos where I test out a glaze on camera for you so you can see what you're getting before you buy the actual product. Some hit, some don't. A very popular one that a lot of people wanted me to test and I actually love myself is Cosmic Tea Dust from the Amico PC line. I love this glaze, but something that I noticed that I didn't see in any other glazes I've ever opened before is that when I opened the bottle, I saw these little yellow sparkly specks in there. I have no idea what they were. I looked it up, I ended up searching for it on Digital Fire, on Glazy, and I had kind of an idea of what it was. One of my friends on PlayStation, you know, Honestly speaking, if you want to ever hang out with me, you just play Destiny and there you go. One of the homies on PlayStation had that conversation with me of like, why can't you just put sparkles in things? And you know what? She's right. Why can't I just put sparkles in things? I am about 40% sure that this stuff right here when I open the bottle is really just a black glaze with something called mica powder in it. Mica powder is very popular in makeup, lip gloss, a lot of cosmetic products, but it's basically little tiny sparkles of gold. And you know what? I kind of figured I could just put some inside of my glazes. It started off with opening up the bottle, guessing the mineral. The mineral ended up being mica powder. At least I'm guessing it was mica powder. I looked up at what temperature mica powder melts. It turns out to be like 2000 degrees Celsius, which if you translate to Fahrenheit is way above what my kiln could ever get. And then I wondered what color it makes. It turns out it comes in a bunch of different colors. And so now here we are with a bag of gold mica powder. I even paid a little bit extra for the sparkle. See that right there, the sparkle. There was a non-sparkle version. That one's the sparkle version, just for you. So in today's video, we're gonna test this glaze out on a normal glaze base, put this mica powder at probably about two or 3% inside the same glaze, and see if there's a difference. If this makes the glaze super sparkly, well, then we have a winner. We're also gonna test it out in different videos on glaze bodies, clay bodies, slip, and to see if it works as just putting it on the glaze. It would be a miracle if I didn't have to make a whole new glaze every single time I did this and I could just like, Literally take a scooper and sprinkle it onto an already glazed piece of work. And it still works. That would be amazing. So we're gonna test all three of those, but in today's video, we're just doing one. What? No, I'm not gonna make a glaze. Yes, I already have a glaze. Usually I show you making me a glaze on on video, but like most of you skip past that anyway. You don't wanna see me make a glaze. Plus, you pretend like I'm over here just not making experiments and pottery and glazes while you're not watching me. You get one video a week, you think I'm just over here, just thumb up there every single day, like, I'm working! This is a glaze I got from Glazy that I've been experimenting with called Orange Street. I've already put it on a porcelain clay body, and now we're gonna do the same exact glaze with 3% mica powder on the same porcelain clay body. Keep in mind that the color of the glaze body isn't really that important here. I honestly just needed something that was dark red or dark blue or black in order to see the contrast in between the darkened background and the glaze mineral that would be mica powder. Considering that I've been experimenting with this glaze already, I already have a fresh batch of it that I made probably about a week ago right here. So as we usually do, let's review. This is Orange Street with 8% red iron oxide in it, the glazy profile and the recipe is down below if you would like that. And here on the right is the same thing on the same clay body. The only difference is that this has 2% mica powder sparkle in it. 
You can kind of see the sparkle if you look really, really closely, but it's kind of hard to see. You could definitely see it a little bit more when I first put it on. But right now, we're going to let this dry, put it in the kiln. So let's put these in the kiln and I'll see you in just a bit. Okay, we're back and everything is now out of the kiln. Let's take a look. So it's really difficult to see, but this is the test tile all by itself. This is the reason why this was the tester glaze. I wanted to see if this glaze would come out okay, and it definitely didn't. There's little bits of red specks in it which show promise, but overall this is mostly brown because I'm unwilling to do the kiln schedule that it requires. So this is the test aisle with no mica powder in it whatsoever. The recipe was kind of a bust for me. Granted, I didn't follow the kiln schedule that it says on the recipe, but, but personally, whenever I test a glaze, I like to see what would happen if I put it in my kiln schedule because I don't want to change over my whole schedule just for one glaze and compromise the entire kiln load. So I like to see what happens if I don't do that. This one here is the test aisle with mica powder in it. I don't notice too much of a difference you can definitely see more of that red speckle that i was talking about earlier you can see way more color than the other one but i think that's just application i don't see so much of a difference that i would go "Ooh, this amount of mica would make a fantastic glaze in this base this doesn't really seem like a home run for me this is also a pure porcelain test style with two percent mica powder added per every 100 grams so i added technically six grams of mica powder to this because i had a 300 gram batch a pretty good amount of mica powder for that little tiny suspension. And honestly, those little tiny red specks that you're looking at, you're probably thinking to yourself, that, that might be the mica powder. That No, that's not the mica powder. This entire glaze was a red iron oxide glaze, which means those little specks are very indicative of red iron oxide not being fluent all throughout the glaze. So I, I really don't even see the mica powder in this glaze at all. Luckily enough for me though, I did a couple of tests. So I wanna see how it works inside of a glaze. I wanna see how it works just directly on top of a glaze and what happens when I put it in slip. Well, I think that was a pretty good experiment to test out the hypothesis. And you know what? Not everything that shimmers is gold. Not everything that I put in a glaze is gonna come out super cool, fantastic. But this does help me. Now I don't have to worry about putting mica powder in other glazes and wishing upon a star that they'll make them super sparkly and gold. I still do have a hunch at the chemical that was inside that cosmic tea dust. I just don't think it was this specific way that they put it in or the specific mica powder they put in, or maybe they put in a buttload more than I thought they put in. But thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. Although I didn't necessarily get the results that I wanted, we had to do it. We had to test it for science. Thank you for your patronage.